Hey, you're listening to Guat Rocks, God, the World, and Other Things. I'm Kenny Price, your host. Our mission, advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. This is episode 376, Recommitment 2024. My friend, we started the podcast on August 28th, 2019, right at four and a half years ago. We've done a lot of episodes. I'm just here to affirm to you that the mission that we started with of advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world is the mission we still hold to today. I'm so excited about where we are with the podcast. And my friend, even though we're approaching episode 400, I have so much to learn and so much more to say that God's placed on my heart. So I'm excited. We're just getting going. And I mean that with all sincerity. There's so much to be done with shorts and Instagram and Facebook, LinkedIn, all of the different social media platforms Everything's changing. It's an exciting time to be alive on the planet and have such access to worldwide reach with very little cost out of pocket. And so I'm excited about what God is doing. I ask that you would do me a favor. Be sure if you are an avid listener, I would encourage you, or if you just listen occasionally, I would ask for you to please tell your friends about this podcast. The best kind of growth is word of mouth. And my friend, I'm reminded that if we reach just one more person with the good news of Jesus Christ, that all of this time will have been worth it. Because what can man give in exchange for his soul? How can we place a price tag on just one human soul that enters into heaven at the time that it's their time to cross over from this life into the next? And my friend, I'm mindful as we have brought 2023 to a close We've had family, friends, and loved ones who have passed away this past year. And I'm mindful that none of us have the next moment of breath guaranteed. So these are important times. It's a time to be inspired. It's a time to be lifted up. And that's what we're going to do and encourage each of us to be our best in 2024. So what we're going to do is I want to bring back up episode one, where it all began. And I want you to listen to it to just reaffirm what our mission was at the beginning, because it's the same today. My friend, I'm praying that you have a great 2024 and that you have a time of flourishing like you've never seen before in your life. For many people on the planet, it's a very difficult time right now. But but my friend, I'm telling you that through the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you and I can flourish even in the midst of hard times. Jesus has given us his promise that he is with us always to the very end of the age. We can take that to the bank. And so I encourage you, be of good cheer. Keep your heart and mind focused on Christ. Do the tighten up, as I said in the last episode. And let's see God do amazing things in 2024. As we open up our minds and hearts to Him and the leadership of His power and Holy Spirit, we will see Him do the miraculous. I believe that. Do you? Anyway, here's episode one from the very beginning. And my friend, I wish you a happy new year. Hey, thank you so much for listening to Guat Dot Rocks, God, the world, and other things. My name's Kenny Price, and I'm your host. Today's title, an introduction. A summary, Guat Dot Rocks exists to advance equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. As we get started, I thought I would give you the background on our name. When I went to secure the website name for the podcast, all of the usual end extensions like .com, .org were used. I thought, how on earth is this possible? I thought for sure that the name of my podcast would be a cinch to get the .com ending. So I did a web search on the initials GWOT and found out that it also stands for Global War on Terror. Unbelievable. Since all the usual extensions were taken, I had to start combing through the options left. Then I came to .rocks. I liked the way that Quad Dot Rock sounded. To me, it gave some energy to the name, like when someone says, you rock, or as the hippies from my childhood would say, right on, cool. In support of the podcast, you will be able to reference our webpage dedicated to Quad Dot Rocks at transformthiscity.org. In time, a totally separate website dedicated to all things Quad Dot Rocks will be at the web address by the same name. Quad is all about advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. When you and I are thrown into the vertigo episodes of life, 
We desperately long for and need equilibrium. By equilibrium, I mean a much greater depth of peace and stability than just a balance between two opposing forces. I'm talking about possessing a peace that gives you the ability to maintain an internal composure and calmness of spirit in spite of a world that seeks to infuse your life with troublesome or nervous feelings. When Jesus talked to his followers about his coming departure, his followers became agitated and afraid. Jesus told them, as recorded in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Your heart must not be troubled or fearful. So the peace I speak of advancing is the peace that Jesus gives. It's different from what the world has to offer. Jesus offers us real peace because he's not at war with the world. The final outcome of the world is not in question. He clearly teaches that he has overcome the world. For those who know Jesus Christ, we do not operate from a point of question success, but from a position of victory that is sure, in spite of the present appearance of life circumstances. In the midst of the noise of this media-driven society that predicts every form of disaster and impending doom on earth's citizens, I exist to advance true peace in your life. To come to a place of real peace, we will at times talk about hard subjects. These are the things that life is made of, but if I do my job well, we will always seek to bring the discussion back to a place of real peace, the peace that Christ offers each of us and to the truth. People talk about truth today like it's something that can be self-determined and created. In the book of John, chapter 18, verse 37, when Jesus stood before Pilate, the chief Roman official who would in time hand Jesus over to be executed by crucifixion, Pilate said, so you are a king? Jesus replied, you said it. In the original language, it basically says, you got that right. Jesus went on to say, I was born for this, and I have come into the world for this, to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? said Pilate. Think about the revelation. In that simple question, Pilate snapped back at Jesus. What is truth? Rome's abandonment of God in the right way cast them into disarray that left the people in a state of vertigo. They really did not know which end was up. In a similar way, the abandonment of truth today by the world has cast its people into despair, anxiety, and fear. As I speak the truth and love to you, though sometimes the topics may be difficult, the end result will be peace in your life. It's fascinating to listen to other people's podcasts and hear how many admit that they suffer from anxiety and take medication for it, or they're associated with people who are on medication for anxiety. Some who talk about such anxiousness are very successful in their careers. They have beautiful families, huge bank accounts, great health, and total freedom to live their lives any way they so choose. Yet, they're anxious. We see firsthand, then, that the prescription for real peace is not found in any of these things. They're fearful. I remember the news story of a very successful banker who one day drove himself to the top of one of the parking garages in downtown Fort Worth and jumped off. The news report said that people were baffled as to why. Everything seemed to be in order in his life. Yet he was so sad and overwhelmed that he cast himself from the roof of a high parking garage. The city I broadcast from is a rapidly growing suburb of Nashville. Our city has grown from about 12,000 in 2002 to 42,000 just 17 years later. The homes here give the appearance of success, yet the suicide rate is high for a city our size. The television commercials promoting the medications that seek to offer relief from anxiety seem to be endless. I just heard a news report that focused on the massive number of teens who are killing themselves or are addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol or both, and are in great depression. They are anxious and overwhelmed with hopelessness. If left with only the story that the world tells them, you can understand why they're hopeless. The world tells them they are nothing unique, just the highest form of life, at least right now, in the animal kingdom. 
descended from apes. As John Lennon wrote in his greatly misinterpreted song, Imagine, no hell below us, above us only sky. So in other words, no eternality for the human soul and no God who will eventually invoke justice that would hold the guilty accountable. They hear that artificial intelligence will eliminate most jobs and that AI machines may actually overtake man and eliminate man altogether. The rich are stocking up on private islands and the most pessimistic have given up altogether on this planet and are seeking a means of escape through relocation to Mars or now some are proposing to the moon. Can you imagine living the rest of your life on the barren planet Mars? Wow, that's a real hopeful escape from a sense of impending doom. We know we have a massive problem of world tension at every turn, and that none of us are immune from it, regardless of how wealthy and removed from the tension one may appear. So against that reality, I bring you peace. Gwat is an extension of our nonprofit organization, Transform the City, One Life at a Time. The ideal we are aiming for as an organization is a vibrant city full of caring people who live happy, productive lives. The way city transformation takes place is through the individual transformation that comes by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and by doing good to people in need. On the first day of Jesus' public ministry, it tells us in Luke 4, 16 and following, He came to Nazareth, his hometown. As usual, he entered the synagogue to worship on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. He began by saying to them, Today as you listen, this scripture has been fulfilled. The passage in Isaiah from which Jesus read is known as the Jubilee passage. As you go back to the book of Isaiah and read the passage in its entirety, you find out the reason for the deliverance and transformation of the people. In Isaiah 61, verses 3 and 4, it says, So that they may be called righteous trees, planted by the Lord to glorify Him. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore the former devastations. They will renew the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. As you can see, the advancement of equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world fits perfectly within the scope of our mission. God cares about the city. Why? Because the city is the heartbeat of our entire civilization. As the individuals go, so goes the cities. The decay and destruction of the city is symptomatic of what is happening or has happened to the individuals within it. A friend of mine tells the story that as a little girl, she noticed the house on the corner begin to fall into disrepair and finally looked as if it had been abandoned. As she and her mother drove by the house one day, she asked her mother what happened to the house. Her mother told her the family who lived in that house was going through problems, and the husband and wife were not getting along very well anymore. So as the people's lives were falling apart inside the home, the house began to reflect the decay on the outside. The people stopped caring. Have you looked at what is happening to the largest cities in America lately? Check out the news reports on cities like San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, Chicago, Dallas, and Detroit, to name a few. The cities are in serious, deep decay. Check out on YouTube the hour-long documentary on Seattle called Seattle is Dying. It will turn your stomach. So, we know we are in trouble. We know that we are in a world of tension. And against that reality, Jesus declares that you can be restored and at peace with the result that you can have a restorative impact on your entire city. So the peace and freedom we are advancing is not just to be spent on ourselves, it's meant to be exported to others. Now more than ever, we all need to increase our care for others and go beyond our comfort zones to give our neighbors a helping hand of friendship and care. So until next time, my friend, peace.